studio, and uh, I, I come up with uh, um, just questions I can ask an operator there. There's only a few of them. I can hear you really good. You want to participate in a, a little um, interview here with me over? Sure, I, I don't mind. Um, maybe I should switch over to my main station, though, so that there won't be that intermittent uh, flipping, like you said. Now, I had no uh, clipping, or and, and what's crazy is your system is set up so good right now um, that I thought it was clipping. I couldn't tell it was packet loss at all. It was happening so fast. So um, whatever you did to resolve the issue when I mentioned it, I'm not receiving that on your end. Uh, if you're copying me okay, I'd be comfortable going this way, all right? Okay, roger that. Um, I may have found the culprit. Um, I, I run a, I use Google Earth occasionally, and I must have opened it up um, a couple of days ago or something, and it wasn't fully shut down, and, and it always, always, always interferes with my signal going out, and it creates that, that uh, clipping. So I checked that out, and I shut it down, so maybe it fixed it, I hope. Yeah, like I say, as long as it's not happening on the receive end for you, um, you sound great on this end, and we're not losing anything. Uh, so it's a pleasure to meet you here on 10 Meter for sure, and I appreciate you wanting to take a moment uh, to um, chat with me for a few minutes. So um, after I ask you the first question, if you don't mind, just go ahead and identify and give your name and location, and uh, we'll just I'll try to make it a simple chatter, and I promise I won't do anything to offend you, okay? <laughs> okay, we'll see how it goes. K5 RBI. Yeah, very fine business. It's N7 ECV here with K5 RBI. And uh, we're going to play five questions here. And so the very first question I can ever ask a ham on the air, what got you interested in radio? Over. Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, when I was a kid, and I mean probably 12, 13, 14 years old, I used to have these, uh, I, I got these walkie-talkies for Christmas one year, and they were really good walkie-talkies made from Sears. And they had a, a distance capability of about one mile. So instead of being these cheap walkie-talkies that would just work around the house, they actually would get out there, and I could talk to other kids in the neighborhood as, as far as a mile away. So that's when I first started. I would talk to them on the radio and start started to learn how to uh, communicate on the CB radio through that set of walkie-talkies. And uh, I just always have had that interest in it. And then I retired back here in 2013. I, I had not been on... CB radio or walkie-talkies for 50 years probably, and um, I, you know, live alone, and, and I thought, man, I, the only uh, communication I have is with Walmart clerks whenever I go shopping at Walmart, and I thought, I'm, I'm missing that human element, because I was so, I was so involved with my work. I, I was, I'm a retired pharmacist, and I worked in a clinical setting, and um so I was missing just talking with, you know, good people. And so I thought, you know what, maybe I should check out ham radio. I bet there's something there, and I bet I could meet a lot of people on the air. And, and that's what really got me interested again into uh, getting back on the radio is I was wanting that human contact, and I decided to look at it. And at first I thought, wow, this is going to be difficult, but I'm going to learn it and I'm going to do it. So I started looking and studying and doing everything that I could to get my license. I got a general license at first, and then about a year later, I ended up getting my extra. So yeah, that, that's uh, the main reason. And, and ever since then, that was just back in 2016, so I've been an operator for about six years now, going on seven. And uh, I, I just have really, really thoroughly enjoyed the hobby. It's just wonderful. I love it. Oh, very fine business there, and uh, we, we cleared out uh, uh, question two as well. There is uh, how long you've been a ham. That's very good. What a neat concept to kind of start out uh, with the old Sears walkie-talkies. You know, I think I kind of 
remember those, uh, maybe not the same model, but uh, in my youth, those were, of course, a, a hand-me-downs, right, from my uncle or something like that. And, boy, how cool it was to actually be able to communicate uh, with the neighbor kids and friends down the road and stuff. And uh, I, I think that's got to be how most people in some way have sparked that social interaction, too. Very fine business is, is you've been able to come back uh, this direction uh, later on in life and pick it up and actually uh, enjoy the hobby. You're coming around at a very good time at, at 2016 or so. It wasn't too bad uh, conditions-wise. Uh, I waited uh, quite a bit of time to be able to even have a conversation on 10 meter. Uh, so very good. I appreciate you taking a moment there. Uh, so uh, next I, I would ask you there, what is your favorite mode? What's your favorite mode uh, to operate? Uh, do you have a particular uh, um, a notion towards digital, CW? Is there anything that you would consider your favorite mode there? Over. Well, when I was uh, young, again, I did do a little bit of uh, Morse code, and I learned it back then, but I didn't carry it through, and I had no use, you know, no business practicing it, so I kind of lost touch with that. So I am interested in CW, but my main interest is just to have a good conversation on the air and, uh, you know, talk to people via phone. Um, you know, I forgot to mention something also as a kid, you know, with that, that interest that I had in um, walkie-talkies and CB radio. I remember I went to a garage sale with my mother, and I saw this little, it was a Sanyo radio, and it was small. It was about maybe four inches by about six inches and maybe an inch and a half thick. And it had a big old antenna on it, and it was it was a shortwave radio. And I thought, oh, this looks kind of cool. I, and I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it could do. So I asked if I could buy it. She goes, yeah, because it was very, very low priced. And I thought, man, I, this is going to be cool. So I got that, and I was able to go out in the backyard and put the antenna up and move the dial around and pick up, you know, you could hear conversations from not maybe not all over the world but from various countries and so that was to me quite amazing that radio signals could be broadcast that far away so that was another part of the whole interest that i had in, and even maybe even made me think about looking at ham radio as a hobby because i knew what it could do over wow how neat to just be hypnotized uh, there um, like a lot of us by that short wave radio uh, you know, if I had only figured out that if I put a longer antenna outside, I'd have a little bit more fun uh, as a kid with those things. I, I think it would have been a little bit uh, even more. Con yeah, I agree. That that's very true. It, it would have uh, it would have been amazing to actually get to participate and you know get involved with ham radio. I wish I would have done it a lot, lot younger and many more years ago I'm but I'm glad I got into it over very good yeah and, and here we are chatting today uh, so I'll just take up a little bit more of your time there this is November 7 echo Charlie Victor so any advice to new hams today is there anything that, you know you've been uh, playing around with radio and you've got to uh, experience uh, uh, things all the way from playing with those walkie-talkies to your setup now. Do you have, if there's something you would tell a new ham today, what would you tell them, over? Well, I would tell them, be safe. That would be the first thing I would stress to them is uh, ham radio is a very interesting and challenging hobby, but be careful because you're dealing with some crazy amounts of energy that could kill you and not trying to scare anybody away, but you, you, you can't be digging into amplifiers if you do not take the proper precautions and know exactly what you're doing. Leave that to professionals. Don't dig around and mess with the electrical part of it all. Put up antennas for sure and experiment with antennas. That would be the main advice I would have. There's no telling what you can do until you get out there and try it. There's people that have used fences. There's people that have used wires in their attic. There's all kinds of antennas out there that are available. Study the ones that you can online and learn about all the different stations. I 
to look up a book from ARRL so that you can learn about how different antennas work. And then if you have the space for a certain type of antenna, go for it. Give it a try. And just keep, don't give up, because there's some times where in, uh, a particular antenna may not work for you. But if you keep looking and trying different antennas, you will find something that works great. And when you get that accomplished feeling from putting up an antenna that, that is very successful, it makes the hobby all that more enjoyable, and you continue to try to improve what you have. So, anyway, that's that would be my main uh, advice to new hams. Over. Oh man, how right you are! That K5 RBI and 7E CV. You know that that makes total sense, uh, and that's a good advice from the safety advice all the way to a. Hey, it's all about the experimentation, and boy. If you do it right from the antenna back, everything else is just beneficial for you there. Well, I've got one more question for you there, and then we can uh, I can let you go. There's a little bit of QRM. The band is changing a bit. Uh, so the next one's kind of open-ended, if you don't mind there, Rich, and uh, this is how it goes. So in your mind, uh, the future of ham radio is... Oh goodness, that's a <laughs> that's a good one. Um, November seven, Echo Charlie Victor K five RBI. Well, the future of ham radio is continuance of a hobby that has been around for decades and many many years. That is a very um, down to earth way to communicate with people all over the world. It unites people from everywhere, and it, it allows you to have civil conversation with people and enjoy their culture and their their ways of life and their humor, their, their dialogue, the interesting topics that come about. And you just hear all kinds of things, and it, it sometimes makes your day to just sit back and listen to conversations. You don't always have to partake in conversations to enjoy ham radio. You can sit back and listen to groups talking about things, and they have a lot of good information, a lot of good advice, and it's just very, very interesting, and I think it's just going to be a, continue to be a way that people get together to socialize, and it's much, it's much more intimate than social media or these, you know, smartphone apps that allow you to communicate with people via text. Talking to someone is a lot better than just texting back and forth because you don't really learn their personality, and ham radio will offer that. I think there will be a realization of that over time, and people will real, realize that uh, talking with people is a lot of fun, and, and it's much more enjoyable than sitting you down and talk typing to a stranger that you know nothing about and when you <clears throat> when you have personal contact with someone via discussion or words you know uh, verbal communicate you tend to find out a lot more about a person it's just more you get to know people a lot better and it's much more enjoyable so I think it's going to be a uniting uh, way for people just to continue to get together and, and socialize over the airwaves over well, very good. I agree. Uh, you know, a resurgence of intimate connection through verbal communication, man. That's very cool. Well, I, I do appreciate you taking a moment to chat with me there, Rich. It's uh, what this is all about. It's a two-way street, and uh, I can't do it without stations like you. Over. USL there, Sean. Thanks for uh, the interview. That was very nice. I enjoyed that. So uh, I'll wish you 73s. There is a little bit of QRM coming in, and the band's kind of uh, lowering or shifting downward. So uh, it was great that I got to bump into you today, and I'm sure that there's probably some others out there that would like to say hello to you. You're a very interesting person, and I uh, hope I can bump into you again to ask you about your dogs. Those really intrigued me when I saw them. Very, very nice. Uh, November 7, Echo Charlie Victor. This is K5. Runs batted in. Take care, Sean. Yeah, it was going to be my next question if you were a baseball guy there. So uh, look forward to talking to you when spring comes back around for sure. Hopefully 10 will open. Thank you again, Rich. It's been a pleasure on this end, and uh, uh, we'll look forward to tying in with you down the log. 
Thank you again. I do appreciate it. Seven three from Washington. Over. Seventy three, Sean. Great talking with you. And yes, I'm a huge Houston Astros baseball fan, and we're in the World Series. <laughs> Anyway, take care, my friend. It's been nice talking with you. November 7, November 7 Echo Charlie Victor, Kilo 5, runs batted in. Uh, very good. Yeah, I'll think of you there as uh, as uh, start paying attention to the scores. We'll clear it to K5 RBI. Was there another Kilo 5 station calling? 